Have you noticed how many of your daily activities and your essential tasks are now doable online? You stay in touch with family and friends online. You do research online. You collaborate with schoolmates online. You shop online. And you may even do your banking online. As more and more activities shift to the digital world, so do the predators, unfortunately. Cybersecurity is an increasingly serious issue for individuals and for organizations as we share so much of our data online. What are the risks you should be aware of? How can hackers harm you? How do you protect yourself? My name is Cherise. Join me on a learning journey about cybersecurity so we can navigate this increasingly digital world in a safer, smarter way. For this module, we will focus on a threat you've probably already encountered, even if you weren't aware, phishing. Sensitive information that may be targeted by bad actors. Think about the last time you filled out a form online. Maybe you were creating an account for an online store you just discovered, or you were signing up for a new social media account. What personal information did you have to submit online? That data that you probably readily shared online is what bad actors or hackers target when they go phishing. Personally identifiable information such as your name and address, banking or credit card details which you usually share when you shop online, passwords. These are the sensitive information that predators can use to harm you. Who is targeting you? Who are these predators? Hackers are online predators who can harm you by compromising your security. They typically use spam email, bogus websites, or phishing scams to deliver dangerous malware to your computer. Why are hackers targeting you? This malware or malicious software is usually deployed as a link or a file attachment in an email. Hackers expect you to click on the link or open the file to execute the malware, which will then gain access to your system. Once inside, it can capture sensitive information such as your passwords or bank account details that hackers can use for illegal financial transactions. In an organizational setting, malware can do even more damage. Remember that time when the Twitter accounts of Bill Gates Joe Biden and Kim Kardashian were hacked. That was the result of a phishing attack. Hackers targeted Twitter employees who had access to the platform's account support tools. As a result, the hackers were able to tweet using the personal accounts of these very famous and very influential Twitter users. Phishing. So what is phishing? Phishing is a cybercrime in which a target or targets are contacted by email, telephone, or text message by someone posing as a legitimate institution to lure them into providing sensitive data such as personally identifiable information, banking and credit card details, and passwords. Three types of phishing attacks. There are three types of phishing attacks. Vishing, which is a mashup of voice and phishing, refers to phishing done over phone calls. An example of a phishing attack is when you get a call saying you've won a prize. But before you can claim it, you have to say, pay for a shipping fee. The caller will then ask you for your credit card details and voila, you've been compromised. Smishing, on the other hand, uses SMS messages or notifications to target people. You may receive an SMS notification containing a URL that leads to a fake page designed to gather personal details. Lastly, the most common type of phishing is email phishing. This is when hackers send email messages containing a URL that links to a fake page, commonly known as a phishing site. These phishing sites are designed to trick you into believing you're on a legitimate website and that it's safe to share your confidential information. Since email phishing is the most common type, let's focus on that. 
How can you tell when an email is a phishing attack? Here are some telltale signs. You don't recognize the sender's email address. Maybe the username looks legitimate. Say, for example, the name of a bank account. But the domain is something else entirely. The email is from someone outside your organization. Someone you don't know at all. The email has an unusual embedded hyperlink or URL. The email contains an attachment that you are instructed to download. There's usually a sense of urgency in the message, such as if you don't respond now, we will disable your account. The email asks you to click or download an attachment to avoid negative consequences. How to protect yourself from a phishing attack? Now that you know the signs of a phishing attack, how do you go about protecting yourself? Let's say you click on a link that was emailed to you. Before sharing any of your information on the website you land on, make sure the site's URL begins with HTTPS. That's a sign a website is encrypted and is therefore more secure. There should also be a closed lock icon near the address bar. Keep your browser up to date by regularly installing security patches. These patches are released in response to security loopholes that fishers and other hackers inevitably discover and exploit. As a general rule, you should never share personal or financially sensitive information over the internet. When in doubt, visit the main website of the company in question. Get their number and give them a call. You can also report phishing to industry groups or authorized personnel. In some cases, legal actions can be taken against fraudulent websites. Can you tell which are legitimate communications and which are phishing attacks? Do you think you have enough information about phishing to recognize an attack when you see it? Let's check your knowledge. I'll show you screen grabs of messages and web pages, and you tell me if they are legitimate or phishing attacks. Let's get started. Take a look at this email. Does it seem legitimate to you? This is a phishing attack. Look at the domain of the sender's email address. It doesn't match the organization that supposedly sent the email. The salutation is also vague. If this were a legitimate email from your bank, don't you think your bank would know your name? There is also this suspicious attachment. Note that no legitimate bank will include a form within an email that they send to you. If you receive this text message, would you do as it says? This is a phishing attack. Take a look at the URL. Does that seem like it will lead to a legitimate Apple website? Also remember what I said earlier. Phishing attacks usually use a sense of urgency to prompt you to do something careless. In this case, the hackers are banking on your fear of losing access to your Apple account. Let's say you click on a link and land on this web page. Would you key in your username and password? You should. This is a legitimate site. Notice the HTTPS that's part of the URL. That means this is a secure site. Also, note that closed lock icon preceding the URL, another sign that this is a secure site. And if you Google Facebook sign-on page, this is what it actually looks like. How about this web page? Would you key in your credentials here? This is a phishing site. Check out the URL at the top. The real Google Docs site uses HTTPS. This one doesn't, which means this is not a secure site. And the rest of the URL doesn't reference Google at all. Lastly, if you search the official Google Docs sign-on page, you will see that the design is different from this one. That wraps up our lesson on phishing. I hope you picked up 
some useful tips and guidelines today and that you are now better prepared to protect yourself from potential phishing attacks. That's just the tip of the iceberg though. There are many ways hackers can infiltrate even secure systems and do harm. The next learning module will look at how organizations protect themselves from these bad actors through a security practice called vulnerability management. That's the next stop on your cybersecurity learning journey. See you in the next module.